Tokyo, March 2001. Come down, Fumiko said with a smile. They'll be here soon, I promise. But nothing she said could tame the excitement of the children that morning. They buzzed around the center, checked their poems, straightened their clothes for the umpteenth time, told silly jokes just to make the time move faster. Even Maiko, whose job it was to calm everyone else down, was jumpy. Then, finally, the waiting was over. George Brady had arrived, and he had brought with him his 17-year-old daughter, Lara Hanna. Now the children became very quiet. At the center's front entrance, they crowded around George. They bowed to him, as is the custom in Japan. George bowed back. Akira presented George with a beautiful multicolored origami garland. All the children jostled gently for the chance to be nearest to him. After so many months of hearing about George from Fumiko, they were thrilled to finally meet him in person. Fumiko took George's arm. Come with us now and see your sister's suitcase. They walked to the display area. And there, surrounded by the children, with Fumiko holding one of his hands and his daughter Lara holding the other, George saw the suitcase for the first time in over half a century. Suddenly, an almost unbearable sadness came over him. Here was the suitcase that belonged to his little sister. There was her name written right on it, Hannah Brady. His beautiful, strong, mischievous, generous, fun-loving sister. She had died so young and in such a terrible way. George lowered his head and let the tears flow freely. But a few minutes later, when he looked up, he saw his daughter. He saw Fumiko, who had worked so hard to find him and the story of Hana. And he saw the expectant faces of all those Japanese children for whom Hana had become so important, so alive. George realized that, in the end, one of Hana's wishes had come true. Hana had become a teacher. Because of her, her suitcase and her story, thousands of Japanese children were learning about what George believed to be the most important values in the world. Tolerance, respect, and compassion. What a gift Fumiko and the children have given me, he thought, and what honor they have given Hana. Fumiko asked the children to sit in a circle. She beamed with pride as one by one they presented George with their drawings and poems about Hana. When they had finished, Maiko stood up, took a deep breath, and read a poem aloud. Hana Brady, 13 years old, was the owner of this suitcase. 55 years ago, May 18, 1942, two days after Hana's 11th birthday, she was taken to Terezin in Czechoslovakia. October 23, 1944, crowded into the freight train, she was sent to Auschwitz. She was taken to the gas chamber right after. People were allowed to take only one suitcase with them. I wonder what Hana put in her suitcase. Hana would have been 69 years old today, but her life stopped when she was 13. I wonder what kind of girl she was. A few drawings she made at Terezin. These are the only things she left for us. What do these drawings tell us? Happy memories of her family? Dreams and hopes for the future? Why was she killed? There was one reason. She was born Jewish. Name Hannah Brady, date of birth, May 16, 1931. Orphan. We, small wings, will tell every child in Japan what happened to Hana. We, small wings, 
we'll never forget what happened to one and a half million Jewish children. We children can make a difference in building peace in the world so that the Holocaust will never happen again. By Small Wings, December 2000, Tokyo, Japan. Translated from Japanese by Fumiko Ishioka. Afterward, Hana's suitcase continues its journey. After spending time with the children at the Holocaust Center in Tokyo, George and Lara Brady, along with Fumiko Ishioka and Small Wings leader Maiko Kurihara, visited Hiroshima to share Hana's story with students and teachers there. As of May 2003, the exhibition, The Holocaust Seen Through Children's Eyes, has traveled to over 60 places around Japan and has been seen by more than 60,000 people. <laughs>